Cinema is a phenomenon. It attracts millions of viewers. Girls and boys from all over the world dream of making their first films. But what are the chances for young filmmakers to work with a Hollywood star? The answer comes from the production company of Hollywood actor Kevin Spacey in cooperation with a world-famous whiskey brand. It was for a second time in 2013 that they made it possible for debutants to film their first story with the participation of a world-famous actor in the lead role. Willem Dafoe, best known for movies such as Platoon, Spider-Man and Antichrist, took the leading role in these three winning scripts of the Jameson for Shot competition. Young talents from South Africa, Russia and the US sent their scripts to the intense competition, but only three of them got to the shooting set. The best. Everybody at our company, from the top down, were given an opportunity by somebody else. Um, and Kevin founded our company with the philosophy of sending the elevator back down, uh, which is something that Jack Lemon imparted upon him. Uh, one of his heroes told him that when you get to the top, you have to send the elevator back down. So it's something that we all, uh, we all are very proud of. The president of the production company, Dana Brunetti, is certain that the three winners for 2013 have had the best combination of a script and an idea of how their movie would look like. Every beginning is hard. There are a lot of nerves involved, especially when you have to direct an actor of the foe's rank. What do you, what, what do you say when you uh, give them spider? Yeah, What's, uh, yeah I, I didn't say little. I said I had... I damaged the nerve in my spine. No, I didn't. Who are the 2013 winners in the most fierce competition for young filmmakers? The American Shirley Wong portrays the foe as a seducer of elderly ladies in the film Love's Routine. My film is called Love's Routine. It's about a discordant elderly couple that basically prove that love is greater than flesh and blood. <laughs> I enjoy her because she's, she's very, she knows exactly what she wants. She's very clear. Sometimes maybe she's not bold enough to know how to ask it or uh, knows sometimes how to ask for it immediately. But in the end, I'm starting to know how to read her face. I can look at her face and I can say, you don't like that. And she says, don't confuse my thinking face with my don't like face. Um, I'm learning. I'm learning. Uh, that's, that's part of the pleasure. When you go to set and you see it, and then you see the performance and then like there's just magic. You can't describe the magic that you're going to see. It's just it's just there. <laughs> it's a short film, but there is a certain kind of um, mystery to it uh, that gets revealed in the course of this short film. But um, I think one of the most interesting things is uh, I have a I relationship with a woman much older than I am. And uh, that's where the the story starts and it's really about their daily routine and you observe them going through their rituals. It's super, really intimidating. I mean, he's got so many films under his belt. He's worked with like some of the best directors in the world. Um, and, you know, it's hard. You're telling him to, what to do and it's, how, you, how do you do it not sounding stupid? You know, like you're like, hey, um, but actually, you know, he has like this huge sense of humor and it's funny because I think there's a lot of perception that, I mean, he often plays sort of darker characters or villainous characters and he's completely not actually like that at all. Finally, she's playing. Hey. 
it was a lot that hit her. Okay. Yeah, because from when we told her to, her actually getting here and shooting was very fast. I think it was like within a week okay. because she was the first one to start shooting. Yeah. Um, but she got her legs as she started going and become, became more comfortable. One more girl is among the winners of this year, the South African Haneke Skite. She comes from a family with a history in sports. Her character in Saving Norman is somewhat inspired by her own father. Defoe plays a ping pong player who had lost an important game in his life. So preparing for the character, um, it's as much trying to open yourself up to the story, find out the best way to tell it with the maximum amount of humor, the maximum amount of fun, the maximum amount of uh, commitment and uh, do it. Camera, our world's going to be that way. Willem is incredibly easy to work with. Um, he is um, so open to suggestions. He comes up with his own suggestions. He's an absolute pleasure and an absolute, I mean, he's, he's incredible talent. And it's, it was just a fantastic experience working with him. When we played this ping pong today, I thought, oh my God. <laughs> I was having pangs of actor guilt because I'm not really a ping pong player and I never, the way it was scripted, I didn't think we were really going to be playing ping pong, but in the end it really is quite featured. There were quite a few challenges on the ping pong scene because initially um, I wanted to do the whole thing kind of CGI um, and try and cut around it, but Willem felt that it would be more convincing if, if they played for real, at least for the, the kind of beginning part of it. Um, so it, it took them a while to kind of get into the rhythm of it and it took quite a few takes because they had obviously had to do the dialogue and focus on the ball, which is quite a challenge, especially since they, they aren't professional ping pong players. So it took them a few, few, few kind of turns to get into it, but once they got their rhythm going and they got their, their kind of um, their, their dialogue rhythm going, it, it worked out incredibly well. It was absolutely amazing and the whole time you would come up to me and say, are you having fun? Are you having fun? Just remember this is overwhelming and it's fast but you have to have fun and that was just so wonderful to have a producer on set that kind of encourages you and that makes you feel um, kind of at ease and he's not looking over your shoulder going like come let's go, let's go, let's go faster, faster. Um, he just had a, a wonderful positive presence on the shoot. The third winner is from Moscow. The Russian, Anton Lanshukov, keeps an incredible presence of mind and admits he's not intimidated to work with star of the foe's rank. No, I'm not intimidating. I knew that I, he would, he's going to act as cool as usual. When I'm working with uh, Sherlin, I'm not thinking about a Chinese-American. When I'm working with um, Hanukkah, I'm not thinking about a South African. But when I'm working with Anton, I'm thinking about Russia a lot. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, where would you like to go, sir? <laughs> the movie The Smile Man tells the story so of a guy with a paralyzed face in a permanent smile that provokes Jesus, weird reactions so in other people. This is not a smile. My face is paralyzed. One of the beautiful things that I remember when I first read Smile Man is I had been to uh, Moscow for the first time recently and one, one of the Russian hosts said to me, listen, I've got a couple of bits of advice for you and one of the bits of advice was, he said, when you walk down the street in Moscow, don't smile because Russian people will think you're an idiot or you're crazy. So don't do it because nobody will take you seriously. They'll steer away from you. Uh, to smile, walking down the street is like, you know, oh, you'll be ostracized it. and uh, uh, be suspicious. The idea came to me when I read about uh, Takeshi Kitano, director, Japan director, and uh, uh, he has also such trauma. His face was half paralyzed and uh, uh, he has a sort of green on his face. So I just uh, imagined that it would be a more broader smile on his face, on his face just like that. I, I literally can't. I, I damaged this nerve in my spine, and I will smile forever. Willem is great. He's, uh, he has a super 
deep imagination. Uh, uh, yeah, that's what all actors are about. Now I smile, now I don't. But right now, I'm actually smiling. Smile, man. I didn't know. It was the one story that uh, was the riskiest because at the center is this thing that I've got to do the whole uh, film in a really grotesque smile. Um, and I still don't know how that'll fly, but I'm having fun with it. In a, in, in a funny way, it becomes a beautiful mask to perform from and gives you, uh, gives you access to different um, uh, impulses. Okay, are you good with the focus? Okay, I think we're good. Okay, that's a wrap, guys. I'm really enjoying him. He's very, he's very certain. He's very stern. Um, sometimes the DP will say, don't you want to roll a little longer on that just so you have it? He says, no, I don't need it. I don't need it. And I say, Anton, it costs you nothing. No, but why? Why? I don't need it. <laughs> so we have uh, a little maestro in the making. <laughs> okay. But actually, I'm enjoying him a lot. And uh, his enthusiasm, when he likes a take, he shouts from the other room when he's watching on the monitor, I like it! <laughs> Move on! Anton had multiple locations. Um, and our location manager was awesome. He tried everything he could to find us something financially more agreeable. Uh, and it, you know, we want Anton to make the film he wants to make. Yes, we have budget constraints, but if we can figure out how to make it work, we want to do that. Um, and finally, you know, I said, let's go see it. I want him to see it. If it's his dream, we'll make it work, because his script doesn't have anything terribly expensive like a bird in it. Um, and Lindsay, because this is, the cool thing about this project is it is a very team spirit oriented type of thing. Um, so while everybody has their amount of money and their budgets, if it's a big issue, we all talk about it. So the price of this location was a big issue. Coming here, Lindsay realized there was so much in this that she could use in this building. They had sofas, they had tables, they had couches, that her production design budget wasn't what she initially needed for the movie. So she very generously was like, you know what? I don't need X amount of money. You can have it back and put it towards locations. So we were able to work together and make the location work. I write cheap. That is really important thing. Don't make super uh, hard, super complicated props, huh? <laughs> which is important to um, one or two locations. It's good. It's really, it's really easy. It will be easy for you. And um, it's all about the story then, again. It should be really strong and it should be really challenging for the actors who will uh, participate in this. The winners in the competition realize what a chance they have been given in the beginning of their career. They appreciate how important contacts are in this business. For the first time in 2013, the competition for young filmmakers included Bulgaria as well. After a highly selective competition for a correspondent, Stanislava Kara managed to find herself in the hub of the world cinema industry, Hollywood, to see the production on set and to witness the premieres of the completed films in Johannesburg, New York City and Moscow. It was such an incredible emotion to win this competition. Um, when they called my name out that I was the winner, I, I literally shouted out of uh, pleasure and happiness because never even in my wildest dreams have I imagined to be part of something so big and to really touch the Hollywood magic. Um, obviously, 
in Bulgaria, we have uh, premieres, we have shooting movies, but it's <laughs> nowhere near the same to what happened to me in Hollywood and in these four different parts of the world where I had the pleasure to, to witness really a true magic. <laughs> A lot of people don't realize, but Hollywood is actually an overrated uh, notion because it has remained such uh, for show business. But Hollywood itself is a neighborhood of Los Angeles, and it is a street full of tourists and souvenirs and impersonators. You will not uh, meet real stars on Hollywood Boulevard. Um, you will see part of their experiences that have been um, uh, captured by camera, but you will not meet them. They live in Beverly Hills, in the Valley, in other cool places like that. Universal Studios, however, is, is really a cool place. Um, you can witness all the, all the sets and all the shooting that has happened in, in a lot of favorite movies there, and not only movies, but TV shows as well. Um, sometimes, even if they are working uh, on set, they would allow tourists to go and just see what's happening, to take a peek, and to make it even more interesting for them. They also do... Um, showing of, of famous scenes, for example, Norman Bates, you could see him carrying out uh, Norman Bates from Psycho, you can see him carrying out corpses out of the motel, the Bates Motel. So this makes it a, a really wonderful experience for somebody who has uh, seen those things on screen and uh, he's able to touch them now. According to Kevin Spacey, the producer has a key role to the success of a film. The best producers have both. They have the business savvy and the politics, and, the, and there's the other side that's the creative side. It's what's kind of cool about our job. It's premiere time. Kevin Spacey and his team put the three young filmmakers in the spotlight. Johannesburg was a really cool place to arrive to after a 15-hour flight uh, and you had to be in a couple of hours red carpet ready, um, which I was. <laughs> and um, I, I came to the venue, which was a very big cultural center, um, where they do these kind of things very often. Um, the local stars started arriving and they were very, very friendly and very chatty and they were also as excited as I was to see uh, Kevin Spacey. By the time that uh, the big stars arrived, it was already <laughs> quite chaotic because everybody was excited that Kevin Spacey was going to be there. Interviewing him on the red carpet is a completely different experience than interviewing him one-to-one, -one, obviously. He has his poker face, his celebrity face when he's on the red carpet and you don't get more than two minutes of talk and come on, how much can he share in two minutes? So um, it was truly a wonderful experience to see him uh, stay after that, after the premieres happened, to stay at the after party as uh, celebrities of his kind rarely do so. But Johann the Johannesburg event was one of the best organized premieres out of the three and uh, they paid great attention to the filmmaker, Hanne Keskite, a very, very talented young woman from South Africa who already has a few shorts in her career and um, hopefully we'll have a lot more after directing Willem Dafoe. The premiere in Moscow was an action-packed event because uh, it was postponed the first time as uh, Kevin Spacey left his uh, passport in a taxi and he couldn't attend. So it was postponed and the second time around um, it actually started to rain the Moscow premiere and it was the only premiere that was outside. <laughs> 
So the, the, the organizers were in shock, obviously, because the first time it was postponed, the second time it was raining. It was quite chaotic um, because the, uh, the moderator of the event was probably nervous because he had to do the question and answer part with Kevin Spacey after they showed the movies. He was quite nervous and he was trying to behave like a even bigger star than Kevin Spacey, which looked funny <laughs> and ridiculous. <laughs> The New York premiere was the last one of the three. It was uh, in a really cool new place, uh, a hip happening neighborhood called uh, Williamsburg, part of Brooklyn. Um, when you think of New York, you always think Manhattan, but this, is, this was something different. It was a very small venue, a hotel, but it was very, very nicely organized with um, not too many people attending. It was quite cozy and all the people there could actually see and talk to all three directors, including all the stars, because Willem Dafoe uh, attended only the New York premiere, and uh, he was able to talk to the people to show how proud he was of the three movies that he made, because the three young filmmakers, of course, they were given an excellent chance, but I'm sure it was really not easy to direct Willem Dafoe. Business and art have always worked hand in hand in order to make good cinema. It is a question of giving them a chance to reach a wider audience. The winners of the competition for a film debut Jamison for shot, Shirlene, Haneke and Anton will never forget the gesture of Kevin Spacey and Willem Dafoe who show them how to make a movie Hollywood style. a roller coaster so it was kind of nice to get off of it and really reflect on what happened and really like wow it really it's kind of crazy everything that like the whole event was just crazy 